This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today we are going to be exploring the Vermont Folk Life Center, uh, which is headquartered in Middlebury, Vermont, and explore a number of its very interesting projects that are going to be going on in the, in the current uh, months. We have two guests uh, from the Vermont uh, Folk Life Center, Ian Drury and Mary Wesley. Welcome. Thanks so much, Dennis. Thanks for having us. Excellent. Now, what I'd like you to do, each one of you, is you just tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and what you do for the Vermont Folk Life Center. Ian, want to start? Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks for having us, Dennis. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I've just uh, recently uh, recently hired a director of Young Tradition Vermont at Vermont Folk Life. Um, and I, I come to the, to the job, um, after 20 years working in early childhood education and various music programs and running summer camps and grew up with, um, a, uh, life full of traditional music and, uh, touring with my parents who were both in bands, um, when I was young. That's great. Mary, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes. Um, so happy to be here. I uh, am also a lifelong Vermonter, grew up in Addison County, um, and I have been working with the Vermont Folk Life Center, or we should share our, our new name is, is Vermont Folk Life, which we, I'll talk a little bit later about that, that change. Um, so I've been with Vermont Folk Life since 2018. I have a background in anthropology and also documentary media production. Um, so my like many small nonprofit employees, I, I wear a lot of different hats, but my official job title is the media and education specialist. Um, so I support a lot of our education programs, both in schools and out in the community. Um, I teach media skills and also uh, create a lot of different multimedia presentations for the center. So that's great. Well, tell us a little bit about the history. Uh, I'm still going to call it Vermont Folk Life Center because that's where it appears everywhere. But now it's Vermont Folk Life, and we'll emphasize that at some point. But tell us a little bit about the history uh, and how it got started and who was involved and wh what the intentions were. Either one of you uh, can. Sure, sure. I'll jump in a little bit on that. Um, so yeah, we were founded as the Vermont Folk Life Center in 1984, um, and we're a cultural arts and education nonprofit. Um, we were founded by folklorist Jane Beck, who started as the state folklorist embedded at the Arts Council, the Vermont, Vermont Arts Council. Um, but she uh, struck out to create uh, a whole organization around um, the work that she was doing, traveling around the state, trying to um, engage with communities and understand the everyday lives of Vermonters. Um, and so the organization has grown since then. We currently have four programs. Um, I'd say the heart of Vermont folk life is our archive. Um, and the archive started when Jane started interviewing people in the 80s. Um, and today we have over 6,000 interviews with people from all walks of life from all across the state. Um, and so the archive is both a repository for those materials to be preserved for the future, um, but it's also um, a catalyst to encourage us to continue to go out and document and understand um, the many diverse cultures and communities that exist in this wonderful state. Um, all of our programs have some connection to field work, to ethnographic uh, field work, which is a, a way of studying human experience. Um, so we continue growing the archive. Our education programs teach people how to do the kind of field work that all our staff is trained in to do that kind of um, field interviewing, long form interviewing, trying to understand someone's life story. Um, we also teach different documentation techniques like audio recording and editing, sometimes video or photography. Um, so our education programs happen both in schools, but also for the general community. 
Um, we also have a, a gallery and exhibit program called the Vision and Voice Program at Vermont Folklife um, that produces exhibits and a podcast and, and uh, shares about life in Vermont in many different formats. And then we have our apprenticeship program, which supports traditional artists in the community who are passing on um, what they know to uh, to the next generation in many different forms. Um, so that's what we've been doing for the past, you know, almost forty years. And uh, recently, just in this past year, because we are. Our, our, our building is in Middlebury, but we're really a statewide organization. We travel a lot um, to bring our programs to many different places. And so that's why we chose to drop the center um, to just convey that, that yes, we have, we have one building, but our work is throughout the state. Vermont folk life is, is everywhere, or we're trying to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> Another really exciting thing in our history, in our more recent history, is that as Ian is, is evidence, um, we have joined forces with Young Tradition Vermont, which it uh, has been a nonprofit organization in its own right for many years. It's um, uh, It was founded by Mark Sustick, who has been a long time um, champion of supporting traditional music and dance, um, especially for young people across the state. And um, that Vermont Folk Life and Jane, Jane Beck worked very closely with Mark on the Champlain Valley Folk Festival. We've had many wonderful connections with Young Tradition Vermont. And as Mark uh, deservedly is working towards taking a, a little retirement after many years of hard work, we're very grateful that Young Tradition Vermont has come on board as the newest program at Vermont Folk Life. And we needed someone to direct that program. And that's when we got to hire Ian. So well, that's, yeah. That sounds like a perfect segue into Ian. Tell us uh, <laughs> about what you're doing, and particularly during uh, the next few weeks, months, uh, years, or what you hope to be accomplishing down at the, uh, well, throughout the state with the Vermont Folk Life. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's definitely a statewide uh, outreach um, with Vermont Folk Life and with Young Tradition at Vermont Folk Life. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I've recently been hired this past January is when I started, and I've been working uh, with Mark Sustick. Um, uh, up, you know, through this coming July, and and I'm sure beyond, I will continue to tap onto his wealth of resources um, to uh, really kind of get to learn all of the various programs that that he's created over the years, and help carry those forward. Um, so I've been, um, you know, we we have kind of like seven staple programs that we've been focusing on. Um, we've got a instrument loan program which provides free instruments to uh, young people throughout the state um, where somebody can reach out and request an instrument uh, that they're interested in learning. And then um, I will deliver that to them and then try to connect them with an, uh, an ed educator for that, um, that instrument. Um, and it's a free program. They can keep um, the instrument as long as they want. Um, and if they grow out of that size, we can get them a new one. Um, so it's a really great way um, to make um, traditional instruments accessible for the youth of our state. Um, we also uh, have an instrument petting zoo, which will bring a, a bunch of instruments, uh, whether that's to schools or to festivals, to events, um, to provide an opportunity for um, young people. But also, I, I find that the grown-ups and parents really enjoy coming and playing the instruments as well, um, to come and uh, try all kinds of different instruments. Um, and uh we have um every year we we host a, a trad camp which is a an opportunity for um people to come and uh for a week this year it's um from July 24th um to the 28th and it's for ages 8 to 18 and it provides an opportunity to be inspired, learn about, perform tunes, songs, and dances from a variety of traditional styles. Um, campers will participate in group sessions each day with a variety of core staff and guest instructors. And the you can be a beginner, you can be intermediate and advanced levels, and we provide content for you um, to, to engage in those. 
those various um, activities. And this year we've got uh, amazing instructors. Uh, we've got Brian Perkins, Laurel Swift, Rob Rohr, Rachel Bell, Heidi Wilson, Jay Kulu, and the Drum Theater, Joanne Garden, Mick Searing, Oliver Scanlon, and Paul Rochelieu. And so there's really just like a wonderful group of people. Oh, and Sam Amidon is also uh, joining us this year, which is really exciting. I think I saw um, go ahead. Uh, I was just. I think I saw a concert of his coming up in Essex Junction, uh, possibly. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Um, um, and then, go ahead. Oh, you, you go ahead. Um, I was uh, just also going to follow up that in the in the coming weeks, um, one of the one of our our biggest projects is the Young Tradition Vermont Touring Group. And this past weekend, we performed at the Chandler and, and Randolph, um, which was wonderful. And and then we performed yesterday at the Stone Corral Brewery. And in less than a week, we are getting all of us on a bus and traveling to Cape Breton um, to uh, go on a on a tour. Um, of Cape Breton and connect with master artists um, in Cape Breton to learn from them, to learn dances and songs and uh, and tour the island, which is um, an incredible opportunity for this group of, of amazingly talented um, young artists. Uh, so we leave on, on Friday for that. And then when we return, we are getting right into the Young Tradition Vermont Festival, which is going to be held um, from May 4th through the 7th. Um, and it is uh, hosted and uh, by the La, La Famille Le Blanc this year. Um, and there'll be performances from them and the touring group and the Young Tradition uh, Youth Commission as well. And they'll be on May 7th, there'll also be a tribute concert to uh, the late Pete Sutherland, um, which will be a wonderful opportunity to connect and celebrate uh, him. That's great. Well, uh, uh, give us an idea of, of what type of uh, groups, uh, traditional or new, uh, with music, uh, art, and dance, uh, uh, are part of this Vermont fabric right now, this whole Vermont folk life. I know we have immigrants from, from Asia. We have our traditional uh, Quebecois uh, elements and, and also traditional Vermont. Give us an idea of di the diversity of people that are involved in this. Yeah, I can jump in and talk a little bit about that. Um, and Dennis, you're right. We really, um, we really strive to be very inclusive when we uh, think and talk about what's traditional in in Vermont, um, because there are people from so many different backgrounds in our state. Um, and that's something that I have really uh, admired as I you know, in my years working with Vermont Folk Life, and in particular getting to work on our traditional arts apprenticeship program, um, which has been running for over 30 years. And every state has a program like this. It's funded through the National Endowment on the Arts. Um, and it, w the NEA provides some, some money for an organization in every state to to build relationships with traditional artists and provide stipends um, for apprenticeships. So, you know, it feels like kind of an old fashioned word, but it, an apprenticeship is a one-on-one -on -one learning experience um, where someone who's, you know, a community recognized artist in some traditional art form. So this could be um, the Tibetan Dranyan. Mm -hmm. uh, Ian mentioned Mi'kmaq Sering is teaching at Trad Camp. He's teaching this, Tibetan stringed instrument, which is really important in Tibetan music. Um, Mi'kmaq has been in our apprenticeship program for years, teaching this in his community. Um, the apprenticeship program has supported stone carvers in Barry, um, a Nepali dance group, um, Abenaki artists, uh, um, people who um, sew or weave, uh, and there's lots of different traditions, um, Burmese weaving, Somali Bantu embroidery, uh, Burundian dance. I mean, the list just goes on and on. And um, so we just do our best to, to build relationships with the, in those communities and make sure that people are aware of this opportunity. Um, and the next round to, for, 
where people could apply to participate in the apprenticeship program will be opening up at the beginning of the summer. So folks should keep an eye on our website um, if anyone is interested in learning more about that program. Um, and so there's a lot of ties through the apprenticeship program, which will be present at Trad Camp. Um, and Young Tradition Vermont has also been really instrumental, no pun intended, in, in supporting a lot of those uh, those communities as well. So it's just another reason why we're, we're so grateful that those programs are, are with us now. You know, this archives, uh, um, do you have, uh, what, what form are the archives in uh, and how are you contributing to the archives? Are you doing uh, videos or collecting albums? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the, the archives are in, you know, kind of as many different recording formats as, as exist. We don't go quite so far back as to have too many wax cylinders, but we do have one, I'm pretty sure. So there's a lot of analog media, you know, things on, on cassette tapes or um, VHS. And then, you know, currently a lot of stuff comes to us as, as digital media. Um, the collection is largely interview based, but there's a lot of music recordings, um, including recordings from Ian's mom. I don't know, Ian, if you want to talk a little bit about your mom's work, she was a really important connector uh, with Vermont folk life as well. Let's hear about yeah, that. Yeah, my mother. Oh, go ahead, Dennis. Let's hear about that, Ian. Yeah, my uh, my mother was uh, Martha Pellerin. Um, she uh, ran a nonprofit when I was young called Franglais Enterprise and Enterprises, rather. And she um, collected and uh, and shared um, traditional Quebecois tunes and ended up collecting over eleven 1 hundred or more. I, I can think it's that ballpark um, of songs. And she would collect them by uh, in a very similar fashion to how we connect with people now, of just going to people's houses, building relationships, singing with them, hosting soirees, and having people come together and and asking about the stories of where these songs come from, and finding many many different versions or different verses of of songs. So she compiled this big collection, and and after she passed, um, her uh, collection was was shared and is is now um, has been digitally uploaded online uh, and that can be found on Vermont Folk Life's website. That's pretty amazing. That's great because I've been seeing some artists, uh, Quebecois artists on Twitter uh, frequently and also Newfoundland artists uh, on, on Twitter and I've been sharing their performances. So uh, it's very interesting to get some, see some of that. Do, do you share that on Twitter or, or do it uh, on other forms of media? It's a good question. That's it. That's always, I think, the um, the big work of any organization with an archive is is you know how can we get it out into the world and keep it a, a living archive and make it accessible. Um, so we use material from the archive in a lot of different ways. Sometimes we do share little clips on our social media on on Facebook or Instagram. I have to admit we have not figured out how to use Twitter, but <laughs> we're, on, we're on Facebook and Instagram. Um, we also draw in the archive for our podcast, Vermont Untapped, which you can subscribe to anywhere you listen to podcasts. Um, the archive comes into exhibit work uh, a lot, and we sometimes share clips with um, Vermont Public or other media uh, centers. So we try to get it out there as much as possible. Um, we've also been working in collaboration through a grant from the Library of Congress um, on a project called Teaching with Primary Sources, which is trying to bring primary source material from folk folklore archives like ours um, and get them into the hands of teachers and students. So um, that's another great way that the archives are, are getting out there into the world these days. Sounds like a lot of work. Approximately how many people do you have involved in this? We have 10 people on staff right now. And we have one, uh, we're lucky to have one youth, uh, youth media fellow who's been working with us for a year. So she's brought us up to 11. <laughs> you mentioned traveling exhibits. Now, how does that work? Do you have a, a van or you, do you bring them to various venues? How do you handle your traveling exhibits? 
Yeah, it's a it's a whole mix. Um, again, for many years we uh, held, had a gallery at the at the our building in Middlebury, um, which is wonderful. But we felt like you know it was just kind of in one space and and a fairly limited you know um, reach. And so, in order to bring more exhibits to more places and and hopefully to more audiences we started designing ex exhibits so that they could travel. Um, and it can be, you know, very grassroots. Yeah, sometimes it's just, you know, our uh, our hero, B Bob Hooker, our colleague Bob, who will just load up his Subaru and, and drive, um, you know, 15 photo panels somewhere. Um, we're experimenting with having things be even more portable. Um, the exhibit we're working on currently was through a partnership with CVOEO, the Champlain uh, Office. Oh boy, Champlain Economic Valley. Opportunity. Yes, Champlain Valley Office of Economic Opportunity. You got it. Um, and we've been doing interviews with their staff and clients and collaborating with those folks to to create an exhibit about both people who are experiencing homelessness and um, support, supporting that community in Vermont. And that exhibit will be on display in City Hall Park this spring. Um, and so the exhibit materials, there are photographs and also audio clips from the interviews. Um, and that will that's being printed on a lightweight, you know, plastic foam core um, that will be on display in the park. So we're, you know, we're trying lots of different ways to to make our exhibits go farther. That's amazing. Well, tell us a little bit about about what you need. You, you really have a very ambitious uh, set of uh, projects. And that is an excellent website. Uh, a lot of resources on that. We're going to put that on the screen uh, or in the video so people can uh, refer to that. But but tell us what you need, whether it's uh, volunteers or uh, people to come forth with materials they may have or uh, or funding sources or anything of that nature. Give us an idea of how uh, our listeners can help. See, Ian, you're ready. I see you're ready to talk. Yes, yeah, I I, um, I I appreciate I appreciate the question. Uh, we are indeed need in need of having uh, some volunteers for the upcoming festival, and people can visit our website at vermontfolklife.org/ytfest to find a link to the volunteer sign up form. Uh, yeah, that would be that's super helpful. Um, also, you know, very appreciative of anyone willing to spread the word about our upcoming events. So our our, our festival um, would be super happy uh, to have that spread uh, around and and also uh, our trad camp from July 24th to 28th. Um, so that would be great. And all the uh, information and registering for that is is on the website. That's great. Well, it says that uh, the uh, Vermont folk life uh, is nationally known. Uh, do you have any uh, relationships with any uh, a national or international, perhaps uh, Canadian uh, organizations that you share information and uh, resources with? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly um, many like-minded organizations across the country that we, you know, stay in touch with because we're doing similar work. Um, and, you know, we're a pretty there's a lot of different disciplines represented in our work, um, but we are, you know, at our core Vermont folk life. And so the American Folk Life Center um, is a national organization that, you know, hosts the conference once a year, which is a wonderful way for, for our, our colleagues to come together. Um, we are also connected with the National Endowment on the Arts through our apprenticeship program. Um, so yeah, there, there's definitely a wider network um, out, outside the state um, and across the border, you know, we certainly have a lot of relationships uh, in, in Quebec with musicians. I'm trying to think if there's any organizations, Ian, in particular. And none are coming to mind like immediately in terms of a specific organization, but there is a lot of partnerships with uh, individual artists um, and, um, you know, people reaching out to Young Tradition Vermont of looking at 
uh, ways that we can participate or have youth participate in their events. Um, so there's a lot of, and vice versa. Like one of the things that's amazing about the touring group is we um, not only go and visit, but we have people come and visit us as well. Um, so there's there's kind of an exchange there of of of, of across the border. There's um, you know the the touring group has in the past before before I was a part of um, Young Tradition in this capacity um, has traveled to Scotland. Um, they've gone to England. They've they've traveled around the United States um, to connect on all kinds of various um, music and and sharing of of music of of our music, but also learning and listening to others music as well that's great it's really something else uh and what what major uh events are you looking to uh work on beyond this 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 year perhaps uh something really into the future if you're thinking about that right now just let us know yeah um as Ian has mentioned, we have, you know, this spring, it's kind of a lot of focus on Young Tradition Vermont. We're very excited for that. Um, later in the summer, we have a couple of learning opportunities. Um, so we have a, a public workshop called Documenting Everyday Life, which will take place in Barrie at the Vermont History Center. Um, that's June 27th and 28th. And it's a two-day in-person workshop that kind of presents the foundations of the, we kind of call it the ethnographic toolkit. It's kind of how we approach our, our community documentation work. Um, so that's a great opportunity. And then later in August, we have another workshop that's geared especially for teachers and is presenting um, that teaching with primary sources curriculum material that I mentioned earlier. Um, and that has a focus on farming and food ways. So that's drawing on materials um, from our archive interviews with farmers, migrant workers, um, and people who are, you know, involved in kind of agricultural life in Vermont. Um, so some educational opportunities in the summer, and we don't have anything in place. Well, we have lots of ideas in the works, but next year, 2024, will be our 40th anniversary. So we'll definitely be looking for ways to celebrate that and hopefully invite even more people in to participate in, in many ways with our organization. Well, that's wonderful. And certainly keep in touch and we'll maybe get the, another show going when the, those events get closer. What I wanted to do today is give uh, people an overview and we certainly have some very interesting uh, things to look at in the near future and uh, also on your website and hopefully uh, people will volunteer and assist in other ways possible. So I want to uh, thank you for watching uh, Positively Vermont. My guests have been Ian Drury and Mary Wesley of Vermont Folklife. Uh, this is Dennis McMahon. Thank you for watching.